What's going on? This is Sean over at Anthem Screen Printing here for part three of our Photoshop for screen printing series. And today we're not going to be using Photoshop at all. We're going to uh, be talking about Illustrator. So we're going to go over live tracing, converting text and font types, and swipe vector is a really important format to have your artwork in. All right, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and show you how to live trace something and just really the magic that is that. So we've been working with this image for the last few videos. I'm sure if you watch them, you're a little too familiar with it at this point. So all we've really done so that it could work for burning is uh, thresholded it. But that does leave kind of these janky little pixelated edges here, which aren't exactly ideal by any means. So live tracing, the quality you're going to get is a hundred times better and it's so easy. Uh, so go ahead and just make sure your layer is selected in Photoshop, select all or command A, copy, open up Illustrator and paste. There you go. All right then, and you'll see at the top here there's a button that says image trace. Um, there's a couple different options that you can do if you press down. You know, there's these high fidelity, shades of gray, sketch dart, uh, all these. I, I've never really had too much issue with just the preset one. Um, I think that works really great. Um, go ahead and experiment. Sometimes other ones work best. It's easier in certain aspects, but just the normal one works great. If you have a copy of Illustrator that's, I guess, older than CS6, so CS5 or V4, um, when, instead of just an image trace button, there's going to be a little, like, you know, you'll press it, then a dialog box will come up, and you can adjust it before you do anything. Just press go. Um, you can adjust it after. I'll show you how to do that. But just the standard image trace works pretty well. And it does take a while. Um, I mean, you literally just have to press the button and you can go get a coffee or do whatever, really. Take some time for yourself. All right, there you go. And I mean, you can already tell how much better that looks. If you zoom in, The uh, just, there's none of that pixelated mess anymore it just looks really you know it looks professional which is really nice and here's the great thing about live trace is that this vectorizes this image um, I'm sure you've heard that word before I'm not too sure what it means basically what it means is it uses something other than you know just your standard like thresholded pixels so you can expand this to a huge you can make it really really tiny um, and it'll hold its quality so let's say you needed to print this onto a shirt. You wanted this on the back, but then you also wanted a very, very tiny version just on the pocket. This is what you'd want to do. You'd want to vectorize it so that when you make it small, you're not going to lose any quality. But let's say your image is a little bit more detailed than this and it's not going to quite work. If you just go up to this box right here, uh, you can kind of adjust some aspects of that live trace. The two that you really need to focus are on threshold and paths. Um, corners and noise, maybe sometimes, but Really, it's this threshold and path. You just, you know, less, more, low, high. Um, find your balance, and there you go. And it's really as pretty simple as that. But you can see that it's selected. It's around the whole box. So if you were trying to edit this and then transfer it to something else, you're dealing with this background as well. So to get rid of that, you're going to press Expand. All right, then. So once uh, everything is expanded, you can see it has sort of selected the actual artwork. So to make it transparent, you're going to press the magic wand, press the white or whatever, you know, background. Uh, it's got to be white. Delete. And there you go. So when you go ahead and select your artwork, voila. So that's how that works. And you vectorized your image. Um, it's pretty easy. But so here's a really important thing about Illustrator that while we're here, I do think we need to talk about. Text. Illustrator treats font types really weird. So here's what we're going to do. So whatever. I'll just go ahead and write Anthem screen printing. So for us, we use this font called Bebas New. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I haven't heard it pronounced any other way, though. So we're going to go ahead and take this. But for us, this font type is really important um, because this is within like our branding or whatever. And I'm sure that either you or your clients or hopefully both you know, they take their font type really seriously. But this treats it live. So let's say that we needed somebody, we, you know, we did this artwork and we sent it to get printed elsewhere. This or to, or we sent it to the client for approval. If they don't have this font type, you know, installed into their computer, it's not going to show up. So they're going to open this and this is going to be in like Myriad or some other 
font that's going to look really amateur and not very cool. Uh, so fixing that is super easy, but a lot of people don't even know that in the first place. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to select that image, or the, just the text itself, create outline. So you're going to right click it, create outlines, and that's all you really got to do. And so what that does is it's the same idea as sort of rasterizing type in uh, Photoshop. So this is no longer a text file. This is, you know, it's going to treat this as an image. So when you save this as a .ai, as a EPS, or as a, a PDF, it'll show up in the actual font type that you wanted it to, which makes everyone's life a whole lot easier. And that's it. I mean, that that looks so much cleaner. Uh, focus out of it so you can see. I mean, that's way cleaner. We got a cool font type going on that's, uh, that's going to be built in. You can make it as big as you want, as small as you want. And that's how you do that.